What's up, everybody? Welcome back to How It's Done. Today, I'm going to be going over what a calcium reactor is, how it can be used to save you some money, and how to set one up, and pretty much the principles behind how they work, what you're going to need, what you're going to need to buy, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, they seem a bit daunting at first, a bit complicated and confused as it is a self-enclosed system um, to a degree that gets injected uh, from your existing tank, but yeah, we'll get into that today on how it's done. So this whole setup right here is actually everything you're going to need. And then a little bonus item at the end to make your life a lot easier for setting up a calcium reactor. This one is relatively already set up. When you get one, it's not going to have a lot of these hoses attached, but I'm going to walk you through that and uh, explain to you exactly what you're going to need to purchase and how this is going to work. So do me a favor, go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. There's a couple different types out there. There's uh, ones that just have the main chamber and then the little CO2 injector. And then there's some that have this little side secondary compartment, um, but they all work about the same. Pretty much the principle involved is you add CO2 or carbon dioxide from a tank like this to a separate chamber that's isolated from the tank. And the CO2 is going to be injected through here. You'll see little bubbles coming up. You can count the bubbles per second, and that's one way of balancing um, the amount that goes in here and the pH inside the tank. It's got a little pH sensor that you'll have to buy separately on most of these setups. And you can either get the one that just displays what the pH is, or you can get a controller like this one that will tell you what the pH is and actually turn on and off the pump for the, I'm sorry, not the pump, but the solenoid on your um, regulator. So it will stop the flow of CO2 going into your calcium reactor so the pH doesn't drop too low. The reason that you don't want the pH to drop too low is because what you have in a calcium reactor is essentially crushed coral. It's, uh, it, it just dissolves in the lower pH water because it's more acidic. And I typically kept my pH at around, I would say, 6.8 to 7. And that seemed to work pretty good, but you're going to want to toy with it and see what yours needs to be at to check the calcium. Um, you also have the drip rate that you're going to be able to adjust on this guy uh, to kind of dial in exactly how much you want it to drip. Understand, though, that the more this is dripping in your tank, the more fresh water is going to be coming into this. So let's run through the setup real quick. You're basically going to have a pump that is set up in your sump of the tank that is going to pump the water through the line here and it'll be added to the calcium reactor. This is a pressurized system to a degree. It's a completely enclosed and what this does then right here, this pump here will circulate the water through the calcium reactor, come back in and completely circulate it through. This line right here that's also added to this uh, circulating pump is where your CO2 is going to be injected and completely circulated through. So set this up. Basically, you'll have this guy in the tank pumping the water into here. You'll also have your CO2 container, which you'll have a regulator. You can tinker with it. Um, really, the only thing you need to know is this on the side or whatever the valve that controls the um, the bubbles coming through here that supplies this line. Um, you're going to want to check valve so that water doesn't work its way back into the tank because that will be a definite problem. But this will get made up on the top here to the line that's going to shoot air out and you'll be seeing the bubbles come up. From there, this line goes to the top and this actually is open to the top here. Let me see if I can get this off. Okay, yeah, see, 
this is open to the top here. So that if air does develop in this container, it's going to be pulled through with the pump back into here and be circulated so that that CO2 is continually moved through the rocks to dissolve it. So that's all you need to know in terms of adding the CO2 to the system. From there, you've got this second one at the top, which as you can see inside here, um, kind of, it has a little, oh, let's open it again. Sorry. It's got a little hole cut lower down so that you don't feed, see little holes here? Well, this glass right here, I'm not sure if you can see that real well, but that's actually connected to the top. These holes are designed to let the air or CO2 bleed out through the top so that all you're having is water going through this line. From there, the water comes and it goes into the bottom of this. This is your secondary chamber. You might not have a secondary chamber. If your calcium reactor doesn't have a secondary chamber, chamber this is going right back into the tank. This is going to be what this is. Um, some people will put the magnesium crystals here so that you add the magnesium along with the calcium to the tank. I like to mix it in with the media because remember, this is not being circulated. This is. So, yeah. And then from there, this line is connected to your little valve that you can choose to dial in and just drip into the tank. A lot of people say whatever your bubble rate is here is about what you want your drip rate to be here. Um, that seems to be a good rule of thumb to get it set up by, and then you can just tweak it as it goes. Now, like I said, that's really all you need to do a calcium reactor setup. Um, most of the times when you buy this calcium reactor, it's not going to come with the injection pump from your uh, tank. It's not going to come with your CO2 container, and it's not going to come with the valves or the pH sensor. This is a really good one. I would highly recommend it. When you set this up though, you're going to want to hook up the probe. Normally it comes with a calibration fluid that you can use this little screw here to dial in the calibration exactly at pH 7 so that it reads out right on the screen. And that way you know that whatever the pH is reading out is accurate. From there, you can kind of dial this into what the pH you want it to turn on and off at is. Yeah, it's 6.8, 6.9. Um, and then whether you want it to be above or below with the switch here. So when that goes below, this is the other end of that. It's a little plug. When that goes below, it's going to stop providing power to this, which in turn means that this plug, which controls the solenoid here, will not have power. So air, or rather CO2, will stop being fed through this, stop going in here. And once the pH in this gets above that rate again, it will open the valve again, your little solenoid, and it'll start supplying more carbon dioxide. That's pretty much all you need to know. That's really all there is to it. Pretty simple. Why would you want to use something like this? Well, if you've got a bunch of corals in your tank, this isn't going to be for a fish tank. This isn't going to be for fresh water. But if you've got a lot of SPS, stony corals, LPS, stony corals, um, clams, stuff that just likes to suck the calcium out of the water, that gets your alkalinity to dip, and you're going through a lot of calcium and alkalinity additives a month, this might be a more cost-effective solution. Filling up this container, um, I would have to get this refilled about every six months on my reefer 750. Cost me about 20 bucks. The media here, a lot of people have said the media dissolves over time and disappears. Mine never did. I bought a 50 pound box of this stuff and over three years, I think I might have used 10 pounds of it. Um, that cost me maybe a hundred bucks when I bought it. So figure I've spent, I don't know, with appreciation and how much it would cost now, maybe 40 bucks uh, overall. So yeah, definitely a worthwhile investment if you're spending way too much on additives. Um, if you just have a fish tank, not needed, but good to know. And if you're cool just doing additives, um, by all means, just stick with the additives. But 
this is how it's set up. And then obviously, you know, this guy just gets plugged in right here. That's your um, pH sensor. So that'll tell you what the pH is inside the reactor. I would also recommend that you buy a separate pH sensor for the tank itself. Because if your pH in the tank starts to get too low, uh, the skeletons of the coral can start to dissolve. And you don't want that. That's part of the same thing that is happening in some of the reefs is if the acidity goes up, the coral starts to die off because it's impacting the skeletal structure. So hope you like this video. Hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave, please leave them below. And I will do my best to get them answered. Thanks for joining us on How It's Done.